Hello everyone and welcome back to the round 6 recap of the Superbets Chess Classic Romania. In today's matchups, we had one winner. Alireza Firuja was able to win against Wesley So and we had four draws. Fabiana Caruana drawing with the white pieces against Jan Nepomniachi. Pragnananda drawing Deak Bogdan Daniel with the white pieces. Nodirbek Abdu Satarov drawing Anishkiri with the white pieces and Maxim Vashir Lagrav drawing Gukesh with the white pieces. After six rounds, the leader stays the same. Fabiana Caruana leading the event with four points out of six rounds. He is closely followed by Gukesh and Pragnananda and Alireza Firuja after today's game with three and a half out of six. And they are closely followed by MVL and Jan Nopomniachi. They are also closely followed by Nodirbek Abdusatarov, Wesley So, Anish Kiri. And at the end of the table, we have Deak Bogdan Daniel. Without further ado, let's get into the action. The first game that we're going to be looking at is between Fabiana Caruana and Jan Nepomniachi. This was actually a very quick draw, relatively quick draw, between the two players. Fabi started the game off with knight f3, d5, g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, d4, knight f6, castles, castles, c4, and c6. We have a very symmetrical Grunfeld position out of the opening, and white decided to play this move knight b to d2, developing his knight. Nepo quickly replies with the move a5, gaining some space on the queen side, to which Fabi replies with b3, trying to prevent the idea of black pushing the a pawn to a4. Black responds with knight e4 and Fabi simply develops his bishop, to which Nepo plays the move a4 nevertheless. After b takes a4, Nepo plays this very interesting move, knight to c5, offering the knight, but if white were to take the knight on c5, black would simply take the bishop on b2, and after rook b1, the bishop drops back to g7, with the pair of bishops and a good pressure on the a pawn, which black will eventually pick up and will have a nice position after knight d7, threatening the c5 pawn as well. Therefore, after something, Fabi played the move a5, giving the pawn uh, back to black. Black recaptures with queen takes a5 and knight to b3, attacking the queen as well as attacking the knight. So in this position, Black played the move queen to b4 and pinned the knight so that if knight takes c5 happens, which did happen in the game, black can play the move queen takes b2. Black has the bishop pair at the moment, white goes cd5, black replies cd5, and white plays the move a4. Black responded with knight d7, the queen is totally safe on b2, and white saw nothing more than repeating the position, so we had a very quick draw in the matchup between Fabiana Caruana and Jan Nepomniachi. The second game that we're going to be looking at is between Pragnananda and Deak Bogdan Daniel. The game started off with d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, a Nimzo Indian defense. White plays the move e3, which has been played quite a bit in this tournament and is a very popular line, the Rubinstein variation. e3, b6, white goes knight e2, Knight jumps to e4, bishop d2, knight takes d2, and queen takes d2. Black has the bishop pair advantage early on in the game, whereas white has slightly better development out of the opening. Bishop b7, a3 attacking the bishop, the bishop drops back, black is not interested in giving up the bishop pair, to which white responds the move d5, shutting down this bishop on b7. White plays a5, knight jumps to f4, opening the diagonal of the bishop so that white can complete his development. Black plays the move e5, hitting the knight, forcing the knight to drop back. Knight d3, d6. White completes their development with the next few moves, and black attacks the pawn on c4. White went back to c1, defending the pawn, whereas black retreated, trying to get a better square for his bishop, opening up the diagonal after the knight jumps to c5. White goes knight d3, trying to trade the knights off. Black is not interested in taking the knight and instead keeps the tension between the knights. 
white plays the move e4 gaining some space on the center and black plays the move bishop g5 attacking the queen on d2 white simply moves the queen away and black plays the move g6 with potential ideas of playing f5 and launching a kingside attack very similar to the king's indian defense since the pawn structure is completely a king's indian pawn structure white goes rook b1 hoping for a b4 break in the future f5 is played knight takes c5 pawn takes c5 and b4 happens on the board after some massive trades we get into this position where black plays the move bishop c1 attacking the rook and eventually we get a opposite colored bishop which has very high tendencies for the game to end in a draw black places the bishop on c5 putting pressure on f2 and after a few more moves we get a position like this where the position is relatively dry black does not have any opportunities to attack f2 since the rook is defending the f2 pawn from c2 and the f file is blocked because of the bishop on f3 so after a couple of moves players just repeated the position and agreed to a draw very solid draw by both sides our next game is between Ali Reza Firuja and Wesley So, and this was definitely the most exciting game of the round. Ali Reza winning with the white pieces and very close to catching up with the leader with a few rounds to go. So the game starts off with d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4, another Nimzo Indian defense, to which Ali Reza plays the move a3, which asks black the question, about what he's doing with the bishop of course this is a well-known theory black plays bishop c3 and white replies with b takes c3 so white has the bishop pair very early on in the game and this line a3 is usually played when white really wants to play a very sharp game black plays b6 and f3 as we're already seeing Firuja wants to get the game as sharp as possible trying to go e4 black plays knight c6 e4 and knight goes to a5 so far so good this is very typical at this point and white plays the move c5 b takes c5 and rook b1 and c takes d4 played c takes d4 white has sacrificed the pawn in order to gain some initiative black responds with the move c5 to which white captures with d takes c5 up to this point alireza was blitzing out his move and wesley had spent a few minutes to get to this position and here this was the moment where Firuja spent around six minutes to make his next move perhaps not in preparation anymore black responded with castles to which alireza spent a lot of time playing bishop f4 which really shows that he is not in preparation at this point although he has the bishop pair and a very solid advantage not down material anymore since he captured the pawn on c5 the knight drops back to b7 asking for the pawn on c5 to which white centralizes his queen and defending the pawn black goes rook to e8 it is worth noting that if queen a5 was played in this position white could have replied with the move queen to b4 offering the trade of queens and if black takes on c5 this would not be good as after queen takes knight takes and bishop d6 white would be attacking the knight as well as the rook gaining some material so after queen d4 rook e8 was played with the idea to go queen a5 check to pick this pawn up to which white plays the move knight e2 queen a5 check was played and knight c3 was the response and in this position black indeed could have taken this pawn on c5 because now that the rook is not on f8 the tactics of fork or double attack does not work but after queen takes knight takes bishop dropping back to e3 attacking the knight and white would have some very good uh, attacking chances if knight b7 knight to b5 would win the game on the spot because knight c7 is going to be a huge threat to fork the two rooks and this rook on a8 is also kind of helpless because whenever it goes to the b8 square the a7 pawn will be hanging so white would be winning in this scenario black in this position probably would have to play a move like d6 but after knight b5 white would have a huge advantage which wesley so didn't seem to like and therefore he played the move a6 
preventing all sorts of general ideas with knight b5. White plays the move bishop e3. He doesn't want to give up his pawn. Queen takes a3 and e5. Queen takes a3 may be slightly greedy at this point, but Wesley so was feeling the pressure and decided to just go for the pawn at this point. But now the white position is completely winning. The black pieces are not developed well. The bishop pair advantage and the weak king on g8. White had a relatively easy time converting this. Black gave up two minor pieces to get the rook, but um, this is not enough compensation for, for black. So after a few moves, Alireza was able to convert his material advantage. And at this point, Wesley So threw in the towel and resigned. A very impressive win when Firuja really had to bounce back and he's really catching up to the leader and has the momentum on his side. The next game that we're going to be looking at is between Noderbek Abdusatorov and Anishkiri. Let's, let's restart that since. Okay. The next game that we're going to be looking at is between Noderbek Abdusatorov and Anishkiri. The game started off with e4, c5, knight f3, d6, d4, cd4, knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, and a6. We have yet another Nidorf variation of the Sicilian defense, to which Noderbeck repeats the queen d3 move, and of course this is no surprise at this point. Anish replies knight d7, white goes a4, g6, bishop e2, bishop g7, castles b6, knight jumps to c6. So b6 was already a relatively new move for Noderbeck since he spent some time thinking about the move knight c6. Also, b6 was also relatively new for Anish Giri since he spent around 10 minutes to play the move. Knight went to c6, queen c7, knight went to b4, trying to jump to the d5 square. Bishop b7, knight d5, take, 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 take. White has the bishop pair advantage. So today we have been seeing a lot of bishop pairs versus knight and bishop uh, combination. And we have also seen decent amount of opposite colored bishops on this round. Pawn went to c3, knight c5, queen c2. Queen to b7, bishop e3 developing the bishop. If black were to take this pawn, of course this would not be good since the move bishop to f3 would skewer the queen and the rook at the same time, gaining material. Instead, b5 was played and bishop takes c5, leading yet to another opposite colored bishops. Bishop f3, rook b8, rook e1. Both sides are improving their pieces while trading a few pawns here and there um, and more pieces. So this position is relatively simple for holding. White sacrificed the pawn with the idea to get the d5 square for his minor piece. And the queens came off the board. Bishop went to d5. And the game led to a very simple draw. Both of the players, they played it out, but the game just went towards a very simple draw and they didn't want to repeat, they just kept playing, but there is not much really to play for. White gave up another pawn and eventually gave up more pawns. They're just shuffling at this point. They're not playing for anything. And finally, after playing for a very, very, very long time, and it is actually curious to know why they played for so long but at the end the game ended in a draw with opposite colored bishops remaining on the board the final game of the round is between mvl and Lukesh. so the game started off with e4 e5 knight of three knight c6 a rui lopez a6 bishop a4 knight of six castles bishop e7 rook e1 and we had a martial gambit White played one of the challenging variations with the move rook e1 and played the move d3. Of course, MVL and Gukesh knew about this position. Gukesh perhaps picking his options, played bishop f5, queen h4, g3, queen to h3. Pretty standard stuff so far. Um, MVL playing extremely quickly and Gukesh sort of taking his time 
to make sure that he is recalling his variations um, for the opening. At this point, after the move bishop to f8, Gukesh had 49 minutes to which MVL still had his two hours remaining on the clock, which shows that there was a knowledge difference, but the position is very solid for the black pieces and we got a position like this where black has the opposite black has the bishop pair um, but the bishops can't really attack any of the targets whereas the white knight is trying to attack a um, couple of weaknesses here and there and it eventually led to a opposite colored bishop end game as well black sacrifices a pawn to control the d5 square and regained one of the pawns white has some pass pawns and white th does have actually a very decent chance in this position since he has the d pass pawn as well as the b pass pawn maybe an interesting attempt in this position could have been the move rook c5 opening up the b file for the pawn while supporting his d pawn that did not happen which could have been an opportunity for white he instead played the move rook b8 and decided to give some checks and pick up the pawn on h7 while giving up the pawn on d5. The rook is constantly bothering the white pieces. Pawn went to g5, the bishop went to f7, making sure that the king can slide over and the king joined the defense as well. The bishop is doing a great job of defending the pawn going forward while also um, keeping itself centralized. The king joined the game and the black king finally is much more active as it was compared to what it was before now it's going backwards and white found a nice relatively nice tactic to trade the pieces off and the game resulted in a draw um, after the repetition in this position if white had queened instead of um, trying to bring the king the game would have ended in a draw after rook takes, bishop takes, and then king goes to e4. And black can play the move f5 or play the move king f3 to pick up the pawn. And the game would end in a draw nevertheless. So the repetition was more than fine and the game ended in a draw. Only one moment where MVL might have had some advantage. But other than that, Kukesh did a great job of defending the position so after six rounds let's relook at the leaderboard fabiana caruana leading the event with four points out of six closely followed by gukesh pragnananda and ali reza firuja with three and a half out of six and they are closely followed by mvl and nepo at three out of six and that pack is closely followed by nodirbek wesley so and anish giri and finally, we have Deak Bogdan Daniel at 2 out of 6. We are going to be having very exciting matchups tomorrow as Gukesh will be facing Fabiana Caruana with the white pieces, trying to take the leader down and become the leader of the event, where Fabi will try to hold or extend his lead. Anish Giri will be playing MVL with the white pieces. Wesley So will be facing Nodirbek Abdusaturov with white. Deak Bogdan Daniel will be white against Alirez of Firuja, where Deak will try to get his first victory and get out of the very bottom of the table. And Alireza will try to strike with black to try to catch up or take the lead. And Jan Nepomniachi playing against Pragnananda. We had some quick draws today and a very exciting win by Alirez of Firuja. And I'm looking forward to see you in, seeing you all tomorrow for round seven. Thank you for watching.